Meanwhile, a NATO airstrike on a compound in southern Afghanistan has reportedly killed a family of six. As the civilian death toll in Afghanistan continues to rise, we now turn to an excerpt from a new documentary film by filmmaker Robert Greenwald of Brave New Films. He, uh, it's called Rethink Afghanistan and premieres today in New York. An excerpt from the new documentary from Brave New Films called Rethink Afghanistan, premiering tonight in New York. Robert Greenwald's the director of the film and founder and president of Brave New Films. He joins us now in our Firehouse studio. Robert, welcome to Democracy Now! Um, it's not just the premiere of a film in New York. Uh, you have been debuting this online. This is a media activist campaign that you're engaging in. As we move in on this, it's hard to believe, eighth anniversary, eight years since the U.S. Uh, invasion of uh, Afghanistan. Yeah, we started in January and we put out a section at a time as soon as we could finish it, as soon as we could fundraise so that people could use it. And each section has a different theme, troops, women, civilian casualties, cost of war and security. Now we've put them all together into a finished film uh, and there are hundreds and soon thousands of house parties across the country where people are going to the Rethink Afghanistan website, ordering the DVD and then bringing people together, asking the questions and maybe most importantly we're encouraging people to have members of their House of Representatives come in the district and show sections of the film and then have a critical discussion about the reasons and why we're in this war and what we can do to stop it. Well, your approach is uh, significantly different from other filmmakers. We had last week uh, Michael Moore on here uh, on his on his new film, and of course he he zealously guards any copies of his of his mm -hmm. film. Doesn't want any, any of it to get out to the internet until it actually premieres. Why this approach of releasing it as you're making it? Well. There was a couple of reasons here, and it's consistent with what we've done with the other films and with the online campaign, Sick for Profit, which is our mission is to reach as many people as possible and to motivate them to take action. And there's no question the way to do that is using this incredible technology that the Internet has given us. It's essentially taken down the gatekeepers. So there's nothing stopping us from reaching millions of people. With Afghanistan, the decisions being made now, and we really believe there's a chance to truly affect this decision in a way that we've never had before, because it's not an ideological war. And if we can reach people, if we can activate them, and if we can educate them, and that means uh, members of the Senate, members of the House, communications directors, chiefs of staff, they have such profound unease about this war and so little information. When I got back from Afghanistan, you know, I was besieged with people calling and asking and wanting to know more. The response to taking on the Obama administration, you've been doing this now, I mean, this has been in, a, in, in the works for a while. Yes, we've been working on it since January and when we first started, uh, asking these basic questions, which was, you know, it's, it's a rethink is the frame and the questions are how many troops, what's the cost, how long, what's an exit strategy, simple basic questions. Um, we were pretty strongly attacked by um, allies and what we thought were friends and colleagues um, and lost some major funding over it because people felt that we were, we shouldn't be asking these questions. We should just be marching in lockstep with anything that the administration wants. Well now, of course, the ground has shifted and it's critical that people speak up because the military is putting enormous pressure. I mean, McChrystal's going around the world basically uh, asking for people to support the troop escalation. Uh, they're leaking the, the reports and things like that. So I think as a real opportunity, given that the administration now seems to be asking questions, to push back and to reach senators and reach members of the House. And of course there appear to be huge differences within the administration. You've got Vice President Joe Biden being very outspoken mm -hmm. about his views on Afghanistan and uh, you've got uh, General David Petraeus who's in charge of the overall war effort in Iraq and Afghanistan, not yet in endorsing General McChrystal's call for more troops. So there seems to be a lot of fluidity and, uh, and debate going on among key people in the Obama administration as well. Yeah, well, I think it's actually very encouraging and not to be naive about it, but I believe there's an opportunity here to stop the military industrial think tank complex in a way that we've never, never had before. Um, the, it's easy to get into war. It's hard to get out. The more troops we put in, the harder it is. But now is a really pivotal moment. And if people, I think, speak up really loud and clear, and I can tell you, speaking to elected officials and their chiefs of staffs, there's such a concern and anxiety 
Um, they don't want to be pulled into this, and yet they don't know what to do. Robert Greenwald, I want to turn to another clip of your film. This is about the costs of war in Afghanistan to the U.S. taxpayer. The new film, Rethink Afghanistan, it's debuting here tonight in New York. It's by Robert Greenwald, the founder and president of Brave New Films. Um, talk about the different sections that we haven't played and the power of this, uh, as well as people like Colin Powell, who visited Obama in the White House. Well, one of the sections raises the whole question about can troops solve the problem, which, of course, they can. Look, Afghanistan They is, can or they, they can't? Ca they cannot. It's a deeply troubled country, the third poorest country in the world. And the notion that we can solve militarily what our economic, social problems is absurd. And it's a fundamental flaw. So we have a whole section with a series of experts talking about the military not solving the problem, in fact, making it worse. We have a whole section to break the myth that somehow the United States went to war in Afghanistan to protect the feminist revolution with women in Afghanistan who we interviewed talking about the fact that they despise the Taliban, but the foreign troops make their life equally bad and how bad it is under the Karzai government. And then a section on security, which goes to the fundamental issue, because the only justification for the war is it's going to make us safer. And we have former CIA experts and other experts saying, no, this is a policy that is possibly even going to make us less safe, which goes to the argument of those who believe in the war. So between each of the sections of the film, we try to cover the core spectrum of the questions with over 100 people we've interviewed and then lots of footage uh, we shot and have shot in Afghanistan. Afghanistan. And the other thing we, we did, we made a commitment to, you know, one of the many tragedies with the Iraq war, that were never the face or the voices of the Iraq people. So in the film, you'll see constantly that we're talking and interviewing and having represented the people in Afghanistan who were, quote, going to save, but who are not asking us to come in and save them with military means. Uh, and in terms of uh, the security issue, you, we were in the discussion we had earlier before we got we came on the broadcast. You were talking about the how key policymakers are not distinguishing, as you were able to, between the Taliban and Al Qaeda as uh, targets uh, in, in Afghanistan. Could you talk about that some? Yeah, it was pretty shocking to me that they're clearly two different organizations. And when I was there and I met on the day I was leaving, I was interviewing former Taliban who were turning in their guns and. They are a nationalist organization, an organization that has done some terrible things, but a nationalist organization. They're not an organization about international terrorism. And many of the Taliban despise al-Qaeda. So the notion that we've mixed these two together, the, and it came out in the paper today and in the review they had yesterday, uh, people from the administration were asking McChrystal this question, who doesn't seem to differentiate between the two. That's a tragic major flaw, and the security experts in the security section talk about that over and over and over again. Al Qaeda is a small group, they do, you know, terrorist group. How do you get them? Well, do you occupy an entire country to find a few people? Petraeus has said Al Qaeda is not in Afghanistan. Well, Petraeus is saying that. What the hell are we doing there? We're going to leave it there, and I want to thank you, Robert Greenwald. Where is your film debuting tonight in New York? It's at the Quad Theater. It'll be there all week with The Nation, Alternate, Madre, Credo, co-sponsoring it. But most important is to get a copy online and have a screening yourself. This is a time that people can do something. We can't look back, throw our hands up in the air, and say we didn't try hard enough. We can affect policy, and we can affect the elected officials. It's not going to be easy, but the film is meant to be an organizing tool and I hope people will use that. Robert Greenwald is the founder and president of Brave New Films. He produced, directed uh, the film Rethink Afghanistan has recently returned from Afghanistan. This is Democracy Now!, democracynow.org, The War and Peace Report.